Well, Nigerians have continued to react to the declaration of the APC presidential candidate, Bula Ahmad Tinubu, at the winner of last Saturday presidential election in the country. People of Zamfara State are not left behind in this regard. With me is the Zamfara State coordinator of the Tinubu Shatima campaign organization, Senator Kabiru Gerbo Marafa. Sir, you are welcome. Thank you, Jamil. How do you react to the landslide victory of your presidential candidate? <coughs> well, uh, let me first give uh, glory to God Almighty, uh, who made it possible uh, for our candidate, <coughs> Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, to make it to the presidency of this country. Uh, <coughs> glory also uh, to God for sparing our lives to see this uh, very great uh, day. And uh, in spite of all odds, <coughs> you know, our presidential candidate has been able to make it. He has said it time so that number that uh, he is going to be. And uh, thank God that his uh, tenacity, his uh, diligentness, his courage, you know, has all come to fruition today. So we can only thank God uh, for <coughs> the blessings, you know, he has given to us. Uh, back here at home in Zamfara. Uh, I would want to thank uh, the executive governor of uh, this state uh, in the person of uh, Elijah Bella Mutawala Maradu uh, for giving me all the support, you know, to function as the coordinator of uh, Chief uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Uh, he has provided a lot of uh, <coughs> uh, support, uh, encouragement, you know, and everything, you know, to uh, get to where we are today. <coughs> Uh, let me also thank uh, the good people of the Amfara State uh, who believes in us and uh, who believes in uh, what we say. In spite of all the problems uh, of APC, <coughs> uh, they stood firm and uh, voted our presidential candidate. We cannot thank them enough. Uh, I also want to thank uh, uh, my team. That is, uh, we, ta we codenamed our own uh, operations here as Tinsha, meaning Tinubu Shetima uh, 2023, the Secretariat members and uh, <coughs> the members of uh, the coordinating committees. Uh, everybody, you know, give in his best and uh, thank God our best uh, has come out uh, to be the best uh, for our candidate and for our nation. Uh, what is your message to other contenders that participated in the election? Well, uh, fact of the matter is in any race there is always a winner and a loser. And... Uh, it turns out uh, Bola Ahmed Tinubu is the winner today, and uh, I encourage all of them uh, to give that very important phone call. You know, congratulate him and uh, wish him well, and support him uh, in his uh, drive, you know, to take this nation uh, to <laughs> its desired position. Uh, we have seen a lot of lessons in this country. You know, people lost elections uh, today, and they win tomorrow. And uh, even the outgoing president today, you know, is a living example for everybody. He tried his best. He contested three times and uh, he lost three times. But uh, <clears throat> when the time comes for him to become the president, he became. And uh, eight years after today, you know, uh, he has a successor, like president-elect. Uh, and uh, uh, it is not the end of the, <laughs> of the world. Uh, when Buhari came in, there were a lot of issues as to whether Tinubu should be his running mate or <laughs> not. And the people said no, maybe to a Muslim, Muslim ticket at that time. And Tinubu took it, you know, with uh, <coughs> uh, patience and uh, uh, understanding. He campaigned for <laughs> the duo of President Buhari and Osibanjo. They made it to the presidency. And uh, when you look at that time, you will think eight years is eternity. But <laughs> today, <laughs> eight years is almost gone. And uh, Tinubu you know, has uh, uh, come out not as vice president, today as president-elect. So uh, uh, the fact that they lost today does not mean that they cannot win tomorrow. And especially the younger elements in them, uh, I'm sure they can, they, can, they can still make it. So let them come together <coughs> because Nigeria is at crossroads today. <coughs> and uh, we need to put all our hands on deck, you know, to be able to move this nation uh, forward. We have no other country than this country. And the uh, fact of the matter is things are just not going well. And uh, we need the support of everybody. The president-elect needs the support of everybody to be able to work and to take those critical uh, decisions. 
that uh, <coughs> would matter and that would move this country forward. Just this morning, I was watching him in one of his videos uh, where he was telling the reporter that uh, come what may, he's going to remove uh, uh, fuel subsidy. That is a very hard decision uh, <coughs> he would have to take. And God willing, he said that he's going to uh, 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 win the elections. And uh, today I was just laughing. Yes, despite saying that, uh, it is a statement that uh, not every candidate can say it. Uh, what we are used to seeing in politics is uh, to say mouth-watering, uh, or to make mouth-watering, uh, what do you call it, promises to people, you know, uh, <laughs> even when you don't believe in them. Uh, he stood, you know, before the whole world and said that this is wrong, and... Uh, I think he was even saying no matter what uh, manner of protest that people are going to make here. And it's a very hard decision that needs to be taken. Uh, and those are the kind of people that we want on the saddle of, uh, of leadership. People that can stand and take decisions that they feel are the best for the people, even when the people cannot see the good in the decisions. Now, uh, that is all about leadership. Leadership is not doing to people what they want. Uh, it's just like parenthood. Parenthood is a purity. It's not uh, something that you uh, do to your child. Anything that he comes with it, you say, okay, I do it for you. No. You do what you feel, you know, is good for him. That is parenthood. And uh, it is almost the same thing with leadership. Leadership uh, is a great responsibility. So you don't just uh, uh, tell people what they want to hear and tomorrow you change your destiny and they tag you a liar or something. Tell them the truth. Tell them what needs to be done. Tell them how you are going to do it. Be focused, be determined, and uh, <coughs> push ahead. And with time, if you are honest, they will begin to see you know, the realities of what you have said and they will thank you. You know, even after you leave. But when you do things just to win the hearts of people, you may win their hearts temporarily. You know, yes, uh, but in the long run, they will hate you. And uh, we have seen that, you know, it's, uh, history is very uh, distant with it. So, uh, coming back to the question, uh, I urge uh, my senior brothers and uh, uh, even parents, maybe, <laughs> among the contestants, you know, they should, uh, they have tried their best. And uh, <clears throat> that is what that is all they can do <clears throat> because it is they said man proposes it is god that disposes so god has disposed this affair today and it is disposed and let everybody forget about any other thing you know come to the table support the president elect let's see where we can take nigeria so to. now what do you consider the immediate challenge of the president elect well <clears throat> i think the most uh, critical challenge today in nigeria for me, it's that of security, <clears throat> because coming from where I am coming from, uh, the, 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 the part of the country I am coming from, you know, our number one, number two, number three problem is security. And we are going to impress on the president-elect, you know, to look at the area of security, because nothing can be achieved without security. Nothing, nothing. Uh, our region, our state, you know, is in total disarray. People have left their uh, houses, the comfort of their houses, their families, you know, women have lost their, have lost their cho uh, husbands, children have lost their parents, you know, wandering all around. And if those things are not taken care of, you know, the situation keeps e escalating because man needs to eat, man needs to, you know, to have shelter and everything. So these people that are wandering the street, you know, they have no choice than to join one or two small, small crimes, and from there they get to the bigger ones. So for me, <clears throat> the number one agenda for North, if not for the whole country, because <laughs> it's a problem that is being faced by everybody, the number one problem is security. Yeah, well, let us fix security. Then next we look at the economy, or we look at them side by side, because uh, you cannot keep every other thing and just say that you are going to focus on just one thing. So <clears throat> security, we look at the economy, <clears throat> and... Uh, provide enabling environment, you know, for companies, for private businesses to thrive uh, so that they can employ people. Because fact of the matter is government cannot employ everybody. Government is not an employer. You know, it's not an alternative. What we are seeing today is we are choking off the whole system because government is the only body that is employing people. And they cannot do it, apparently. They can't. That is the truth of the matter. So government, all that government needs to do is create enabling environment, make companies thrive, make 
individuals thrive and do everything. And uh, <laughs> they will be the ones that uh, uh, take uh, people into employment. And there will be competition. And they will be paying <laughs> much more than what government can pay. Because if it is a private business and uh, you know the capacity of an individual, even if it takes maybe 100 million naira per month, if you are making the money, you can employ him. But government has limitations. There is what they can take, there is what they cannot take. So uh, that is uh, another area that needs to be uh, looked into seriously. <laughs> and uh, uh, all others, I'm sure, would fall in place. We need, we, we have serious infrastructure <laughs> deficit. Yeah, we need to look at those areas, you know, uh, because they complement the economic growth and everything, the railway system, the road system, the everything, you know. So it is just like resetting Nigeria sort of, because it's like our growth has been stunted. You know, we have been like on standstill, if not reverse. Do you get what I mean? So, 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 so the new government, you know, has the responsibility of restarting Nigeria. And given the age and the experience of Tinubu, I think that is one thing he has to focus on and do it so that he gets his name written in gold in history because there is virtually nothing for him now left to <laughs> he is super rich he has he's been blessed uh, with power even at he has been blessed with achievement so many of the multitude so now that god has crowned his effort and his ambition now is fulfilled the only thing he can do to say thank you god is to the main focus and uh, replicate what he did in lagos you know to nigeria and i think when he he is uh, he does that he is, uh, uh, I mean, like, we would say that uh, the end has <laughs> uh, justified the means for us that stood for him, even when everybody is saying that uh, no to this, no to that, no to this. And now God has said, okay, he has agreed with our plans and everything. So the only thing Tinibu can do to us and to do to everybody is to prove to everybody that, yes, that choice this people has made, you know, uh, it's not a bad choice, and that is the way to go. Okay. Now, coming back to the general election. Yes. The first leg of the 2023 general election is, has gone. Yes. Now we are approaching the second leg. Yes. What is your general assessment of the election so far? Well, uh, for me, I think uh, when we start with the umpire, that is INEC. I think INEC has tried, uh, you know, uh, when you look at... Uh, <coughs> the supply of the critical election materials, you know, they arrived states, at least I was in the Farah, when this thing, they arrived the states, you know, in very uh, good time, very early enough, and uh, the distribution was made to local governments and to wards, you know, on the eve of election, I think all wards of the Farah state received their, their materials, the staffs, everybody is there. So give and take, I think they have performed wonderfully well, excellently well for me. And uh, the conduct that is the coming back to the people, they have behaved in the most uh, <laughs> matured way. Uh, given the security situation on ground, you know, the hunger, you know, caused by the un undesirable uh, money, it is, uh, uh, whatever they call it, is it really designing or recoloring or repenting, whatever it is called. You know, <laughs> now given all these uh, conditions, you know, people still remain calm, came out, you know, and... Uh, queued, you know, to vote their candidate. I think uh, the people needs to be saluted, honestly speaking. Not everybody uh, can do that because the Naira problem alone is, uh, is capable of turning this country upside down, riots and everything. But people uh, took it with uh, <laughs> uh, all sense of responsibility, you know, and uh, came out to vote. I think uh, all needs to be uh, saluted for all that. Uh, for the candidates too, I think uh, they have also performed very well. I was watching uh, many state governors lost elections and uh, you have not had any case of uh, wanton destructions or everything. I think with the exception of one isolated uh, issue in Kano that I had, you know, all other places it is almost very quiet and uh, peaceful. So I think give and take you know, the election is one of the best that we had in this country. And uh, I salute all the stakeholders, all the players, you know, and everybody. And I wish uh, our choice, you know, <coughs> would remain the best choice. And I would be able to look back one day and say that, yes, thank God that we have elected these people. You contested this election, for the Central Senatorial District. But it was eventually 
declared as inconclusive. How do you react to this? Uh, well, uh, you see, uh, like I said in the earlier something, man proposes, God disposes. So it is uh, God that made it uh, that way. And uh, we accept it, you know, with open hands, believing that uh, that is the best uh, for us, for the people. And uh, it is another learning process, you know, because, like I said, God loves the people of this state because he has given us a lot of examples that maybe people that lived before us for 200, 300 years, they have, have not seen what we were able to see maybe in just 20 years of this democracy. So this is one of it. <coughs> you know, when you have a gang up against maybe somebody that worked for you, you know, or for the progress of the people or whatever. So to me, I think uh, <coughs> it's another learning process and uh, I've opened my eyes, my ears, my everything, you know, to learn from it because I believe there is something God that uh, wants to uh, teach me, teach people, teach everybody. And uh, we are waiting for the day, you know, when the elections uh, will be repeated and will come out and do that. How prepared are you? Uh, well, I think you don't need to ask me that because you know me and you know this uh, <laughs> uh, constituency that I represented for eight years. And uh, you know what happened. So... Uh, I don't think there is any preparation for anything. Uh, the people knows me. I know the people. Huh? I know the job. You know, I know what is in there. I know what is at stake. And I know what happened. And I know who is fighting who. And I know what I'm up against. And uh, it's a familiar <laughs> terrain. I know the people. They know me very well. And uh, they know I'm not afraid of them. And uh, in the end, I'm going to win. You know, it is just a question of uh, when, not if. Uh, because the most important thing is Whatever I do, I put the trust of God, the fear of God, you know, <coughs> at the number one thing. I had the opportunity of crushing my enemies if I had wanted to. But <coughs> doing that at that time will amount to betrayal. And that is one thing that I don't do. I don't betray people. I don't lie. You know, I don't pretend. I don't do all this. Stuff. But uh, there has never been a situation that arose that I didn't stand up to it. And this is one of it. I'm going to stand it, uh, up to it, and I know God is with me on it, and I'm going to win. Thank well, you very much, sir. Thank you so much. I've been speaking with Senator Kabiru Garba Marapa, the coordinator uh, of Tinibu Shatima Campaign Council in Zamfara State. He reacted to the declaration of their presidential candidate at the winner of the last Saturday presidential election in the country. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, Malin